Hi, this is Chris from Build 5 Nines. So let's take a look at provisioning an Ubuntu Linux VM in Azure. So I am already logged into the Azure portal, portal.azure.com. I'm going to go ahead and click Create a Resource here. And in the Marketplace, it's giving me the list of the most popular images that are provisioned in Azure, showing me Windows Server 2016 and Ubuntu Server 18.04 at the top. Um, contrary to this display, um, Ubuntu Server is actually more popular than Windows Server in Azure. It's kind of an interesting thing. Um, I have a little infographic over on build59s.com that I posted uh, recently on that. I'll put a link in the description. So if we click on Ubuntu Server, it's going to bring us up to create a virtual machine. So we have an interface here. But initially, we just need to fill in the basic information. Everything else will have defaults for us if we wanted to. So I need to pick my Azure subscription in this case to provision in, then a resource group. In this case, instead of picking an existing resource group, I'll go ahead and create a new one. So we'll say B59 Linux Ubuntu here in this case. I'll copy that because I'm going to use that again. I'll click OK. And now for the virtual machine name, I need to name my VM. I'm just going to go ahead and name it the same as I named my resource group. Um, since this is the one VM I'm creating, I'm not creating a high availability cluster or anything like that. Um, I'm just going to name it the same as the resource group. Um, your naming conventions may vary depending on your availability configurations that you use. Uh, the next setting is the region. So you can pick which Azure region, of which of the um, what currently 61 available regions around the world. Um, I'm just going to leave it, in this case, Central U.S. And then availability options. We don't have to configure this. We could leave it as no infrastructure redundancy required. Um, but this would be the option where we want to choose the availability zone um, or the availability set feature uh, if we need that for our VM. In this case, I'm going to create a just single instance VM. So I'm going to leave that as the default of no infrastructure required, um, or excuse me, redundancy required. And then for the image, it has that Ubuntu Server 18.04 LTS selected. If I open up that drop down, it's going to give me some other options here. Um, if I were provisioning other instances of Linux, we could use Red Hat Enterprise Linux, SUSE, CentOS, Debian, Oracle Linux, um, or even Ubuntu 16.04 LTS as well. Um, and then it also gives us that Windows Server options um, below that. I'm going to go ahead and leave this as Ubuntu Server 18.04 LTS, as that's the most current version of Ubuntu Server. Um, the version 20 should be available within Azure soon, since that LTS is out now. Um, but it's pretty new, so it might take a little bit. Uh, by the time you're watching this, it might be in there. Then we can choose if we want to enable the Azure Spot Instance feature, um, as well as choosing the instance size. By default here, it's selecting a DS two uh, v3 instance size with two vcpus and eight gigabytes of memory it's telling us it's going to cost approximately 80 dollars a month to have this vm running i could click on change size and there's a whole ui available for choosing which vm instance size that's available in the azure region i chose to host it in and then pick from those regions that i want to use to host this and remember you can change the vm instance size later on so it's okay if it's not quite exactly what you want at this time but normally you want to try to get it as close as what you need. Then for the administrator account, or the main admin account, root account basically, on this VM, you need to choose the authentication type. Uh, by default, it's choosing SSH public key. So this is a public private key encryption to be able to connect to SSH and manage the VM. Uh, normally, this is the recommended one you would use. Um, in this case, just to keep the demo here simple, I'm going to choose password, and then I'll enter in the username that I want for my admin user, and then a sample password. Now when it provisions the VM, this is the admin username and the password that will be used to log in with SSH and manage the VM. So now below here, for the inbound port rules, by default it has the SSH port 22 open uh, by default way that it configures it. Um, we could say none and not have any ports open, but then we wouldn't be able to administer this VM as soon as it's provisioned. Um, I'll leave it to allow the selected ports, and we'll leave SSH. Um, as you notice in the dropdown, we could enable HTTP or HTTPS as well. Um, and again, this can be configured again later on. It doesn't have to be right now. Now, if we wanted, we could choose all of the rest of the settings and configurations in the other tabs as the default values and click Review and Create and go ahead and create it. But instead, let's go ahead and take a look at what options are available. If I click Next for Disks, it's going to give me the option for the disk type. 
I can choose premium or standard SSD or even the standard hard drive support um, for storage as well. In this case, I'll leave it as premium SSD. That's going to give you the best disk performance. And this is for the operating system disk that's going to be provisioned for the VM. And also encryption type. So default, it's going to encrypt at rest using Azure managed keys for you. Um, you could also choose customer managed keys and configure that as well. And then there's a section for adding data disks. So I could attach additional data disks to my VM for other data storage to be available. Then the next tab is the networking. And by default, it's going to create a new virtual network for us, a new subnet, IP address, things like that. Um, we could go ahead and, and choose an existing virtual network that we might have in our subscription that we want to use, an existing subnet. So we could go ahead and add our new VM to an existing network that we have out there. Um, in this case, I'm going to leave it as the defaults as well. And then there's some configuration for the network security groups, which allows you to configure the basically the software-defined firewall rules within that software-defined networking stack of the virtual network connectivity for the VM. So we could add some additional configuration there. Um, and in this case, like I said, on the other tab, we set it to open up SSH for us. Um, that's why that is set there. And then there's some other information, configurations for um, accelerated networking or load balancing. If I go to management, going to give us some options to set up some other configurations like monitoring and identity support for the VM, as well as the auto shutdown feature. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. This is actually a neat one to look at. Auto shutdown will automatically shut down the VM at a specified time every day if it is running. Definitely not something you want to really do for production usually, uh, but for development, test environments, or even those rare production environments that you don't need running all the time, you could have it shut it down. So if a user goes and kicks off the VM to run, they're done with what they need to do. At the end of the day, the VM automatically shuts down if they forget to do it, and it'll help save you some costs there in those kind of dev test type environments or even intermittent use environments. And you can also configure optional shutdown um, notifications where it'll actually send you as an admin a email that you can confirm um, or deny this shut down. If you don't confirm, you don't say anything, it'll shut down automatically. Otherwise, you can go and say, wait, no, don't shut down, and it won't. Uh, then I could click Next to the Advanced tab. It gives us some other information. Um, basically, you can install extensions on the VM, like custom script extensions, antivirus, other types of extensions that are available. And then there's the Cloud Init feature that can be used to do some commands and configuration of the VM um, when it gets created. And then I'll click Next, and we can set some tags for adding tags within our resource within Azure, and then Review and Create to go ahead and look at what we're going to provision. Now, this Review tab is going to verify our information is correct. Unique names are required for certain things, naming convention standards, things like that, of other requirements. Everything is good. It shows a green validation passed. And it also shows us an estimated cost of our VM. Based on the pricing tier that we chose, this specific pricing tier, the standard D2S V3 within our central region, I think it was that I picked, will cost approximately 11 cents US for, per hour. Keep in mind that each Azure region will have a slightly different cost. So you will want to do some comparisons there if you're trying to figure out which Azure region you want to use for optimal cost there. Now, if we go ahead and click create, it's going to go and create this virtual machine. As you can see there, it showed the deployment details of the status of each of the components that it was installing and setting up provisioning within Azure. Now that they've all completed successfully, it says the deployment is complete. And it gives us this blue button to go to resource, and it's going to go take us to that VM. Now that the VM has been provisioned, we can see some information like the IP address and things of this virtual machine. If I want to connect to this VM and configure and manage it, I can click the connect button here and it's going to give me some options for SSH, RDP, or Azure Bastion depending on what I'm using for management. Um, in this case it's a Linux VM and it doesn't have RDP support you know, installed with like XRDP or something. It just has SSH. So I'll click SSH and it's going to give us some information there. Now it's giving us some information if we were to use public private key encryption but in this case we set just the username and password. So I'm going to go back to the overview tab and I'm just going to go and copy the IP address for my VM. And I can go ahead and use SSH like I would to manage any Linux VM. In this case, I can also use the Azure Cloud Shell, which I'll open from this icon here in the top row of the portal. And it's going to open up a command line, in this case, a bash command line, right in the Azure portal for me. This is powered by Azure Container Instances behind the scenes, spinning up an Ubuntu Server VM, 
connecting it to my account, authenticating the Azure CLI already for me against my account since I'm logged in in the browser, and hosting this all completely for free to use, just as the portal is free to use. And then I can just go in here and type SSH, my admin username that I created when I created the VM, and paste in the IP address, which for some reason my clipboard didn't work, so I'm going to go grab that again, and then I'll paste that in here. There we go. Now hit enter. It's the first time I'm connecting to it. Since it doesn't, I don't have my own certificate. It's asking me, am I sure to want to trust this server? In this case, I'm going to go ahead and say yes in my initial time connecting to it. And then I'll type in that password. Now, again, that's the admin password that we configured when we set up our VM. Now I'm connected with SSH into my VM and I can go ahead here and do any of the actions that I would normally do on my VM. So we can go, you know, sudo in sudo s to go do a sudo shell and now I can go and run different commands and things against my VM. Then if I type exit, it'll exit the SSH session or in this case I exited the sudo session, now I'll exit the SSH session. Now I'm back in the Azure Cloud shell and if we look at the Azure Cloud shell for a moment, I can actually see I have drive space and storage available to me here that I could go and create some files and create scripts and things if I want to do some stuff um, with the Azure Cloud Shell or type AZ to go and run the Azure CLI and, and have a full command line experience here available to me within the browser. So we'll go ahead and close this and we're going to take a look at our virtual machine here in Azure and some other options for running commands. So if we scroll down here, you can see a number of different options available. And if we go down to Serial Console, this is going to give Serial Console access to our VM. So we don't need to connect with SSH. It's going to give us kind of a, a backdoor connection into our VM because we are authenticated with Azure through the Azure portal. And we have role-based access controls all configured to be able to manage this virtual machine. So now we can I hit Enter. And it is giving me a prompt for the password. So the login, I'll say Chris is the username and the password. So excuse me, I think I said I didn't have to authenticate, but I do in this case still, even though it's Serial Console and I'm authenticated with Azure. Now I do have a command line that I can use to manage my VM just like I would otherwise um, with the SSH or something, but this is more secure. So if I did not have the SSH port 22 open on the firewall, if I didn't open that up when I provisioned the VM, I could actually go in here in the Serial Console, connect to the VM and manage it instead. So it could be completely locked off and I can manage it within Azure, even though, and run scripts and commands against it. So it's a nice thing there for managing the VM. Another thing that's good to look at here, if we go to reset password option, this allows us to actually reset what that admin username and password is, or even the public key that's used for authenticating our admin user to the VM. So say you forget the password, you can easily reset it with Azure. And the way that it does it is there's an agent that can installed on the VM when it's provisioned that allows Azure to kind of reach in and manipulate that VM. That's a standard feature on Linux and Windows VMs that are created through the Azure Marketplace. I'll go ahead and not save that because I don't want to change that right now. And we can see here our information for our VM. Again, we have the name of the machine that we created telling us it's a Linux VM and the Ubuntu version that we have installed in that VM, the instant size that we're using that we configured it for, for the CPU and memory use uh, resources. And if I go and click on the resource group, I can see all the resources that were provisioned when I created that VM. We can see it's not just a virtual machine, as that's the compute resources, but we also have a public IP address, network security group for those network firewall rules for the VM, the virtual network, which is providing that software-defined networking availability for the VM, the network interface, which is the connection for the VM to the network. The disk, which in this case is the operating system disk, so the disk resource here for that. And then there's also a storage account for some diagnostics, like the boot diagnostics that were configured for us. So when you create a VM, you have all these resources that are created and provisioned. Now the cost that we looked at that was estimated when we provisioned the VM through that little wizard was just for this virtual machine resource. All of these other resources would have different costs associated. Now there are ones that are free, basically. So the public IP address, network security group, virtual network, network interface are all essentially free. Uh, public IP addresses, you do get uh, free public IP addresses that are dynamically assigned. But if you want a static IP address, 
Um, there is a cost associated for that in Azure once you reach the limit of the free number of IP addresses you can assign for public IPs. Um, you can look at the pricing information for Azure to see a little more detail on that. Um, but those resources are all basically free. And then the disk you do pay for because that's storage. Um, and then also the storage account for the diagnostic storage. And those you'll pay for based on the storage amount that's used, so the disk space in use. So really the bulk of the cost of a VM is this virtual machine resource that's giving us the CPU and memory resources available. And if we want to go ahead and stop paying on this resource, we could configure that auto shutdown feature. So if I scroll down here to auto shutdown, I did configure that when we provisioned it, but you could always go in here and turn it on any other time. Or I could turn it off now or change the time when I want it shut down. But say I want to manually shut down the VM right now to save cost, I can go back here to this overview pane for the VM and go ahead and click stop. And it's like, are you sure you want to do this? And I'm going to say, yes, I am sure I want to shut down this VM. Keep in mind, I'm going to lose my public IP address because it's a dynamically assigned IP address. In this case, okay, I'm going to go through with that. But if I don't want to lose my IP, I could set that to a static public IP address through the configuration of my VM so that I'm paying for reserving a specific IP address for the VM if I need that. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and leave that and say okay. And now it's going to go ahead and stop the virtual machine. Since I'm stopping it in Azure, it's going and reaching in through that agent that I mentioned for resetting the password. It uses that same agent to go and shut down the VM. So it's going to shut down the operating system. And then it's going to go ahead and stop that VM within Azure, which is going to deallocate the resources. So it's going to let go of the CPU and memory resources that are reserved for running the VM. And it's just going to basically be a VM image on disk and some resource configurations like the VNet, NSGs, things like that are going to sit there so I can easily start it back up and run it again later. But while it's in this deallocated state, I won't be paying for that virtual machine resource allocation anymore. So it does give me some cost savings there to be able to stop this VM when I don't need it running. And then later on, I could start it up at any time when I need it running again. So there we have an overview of creating an Ubuntu Linux VM and a little more details about just running VMs in Azure in general. These things apply to Linux and Windows VMs alike. I hope you find this useful and I will see you in the next video.